Don Koharski, who officiated game two, is the referee tonight. Ray Scapanello and Ron Finn are the linesmen. Patrick Waugh, who tonight could equal the record for most wins in one playoff year, will be the Montreal goaltender. Waugh has won 14 games, one less than the record shared by Billy Smith and Grant Fuhr. And Calgary's Mike Vernon could also etch his name into the Stanley Cup record book tonight. He is 53 minutes away from spending more time in goal during the playoffs than any other netminder. Vernon, of course, would like to extend that record two games further. Canadians have Steve Rooney in the lineup tonight. Shell Darlene is not playing. That's their only change from game four. Chris Nyland with a sprained ankle is still out of the lineup. Serge Boisvert is in. That means one thing in my mind. That means that Perron, the head coach, is thinking physical. We're going to have a physical hockey game. Let's get Rooney in, and Rooney is a tough cookie. You just saw Claude Lemieux and what a series he has had. The game-winning goal in that one nothing triumph on Thursday. Four game winners in the playoffs. Two of them in overtime. From the opening faceoff into the Calgary zone, McKinnis plays it around on the boards. Hunter gets it out into the center ice area. Something of a new alignment for the Calgary Flames to start this hockey game. Sheehy is at center ice. He has Hunter and Risebrow on the wing. Perhaps an anticipation that the rough stuff of game four will continue. Sheehy played forward during one year at Harvard before he started to play defense, so it's not a new position for him. Tim Hunter with a long shot. That sails wide. Sheehy off the board. Flipped it in back of the net. Green is there for the Canadians. Playing it around to McPhee. He'll try and get it out for Montreal. He dumps it down the ice. Back into the Calgary zone, and the Canadians make a change as Jamie McCowan comes back. Long lead pass intercepted by Carbono. He dumps it into the Calgary zone, and it uh, goes over the glass and out of play. Well, there is Jean Perron, whose team won only five times in the last 16 regular season games. And J.D. in that stretch, they also lost six in a row. Even the staunchest Canadian supporter, they want to tell you now that they thought the team would be in this position. They also have a very strong revenue-producing swamp land in Florida to sell you at the same time. <laughs> he has done quite a job. That's when he started getting tough with practices, 75, 80-minute practices, making everybody skate extra. I think the players responded smartly. The Flames trying to move it out, intercepted by Chelios. He shoots it into the corner. Kordick plays it around on the boards. Danny plays it around to the other side. It's centered and it bounced away from Carbono in the slot. Now back comes Poplinski. Poplinski dumps it in. It rolls to the goal mark. Law holds it for the faceoff. From the faceoff, the Canadians take it back to their own net. Chelios up along the boards and into the center ice area. McCowan for Bozak. He knocks it down into the Montreal zone, but the Canadians get it back right back up to center ice. And it's Hogan Lou who's forced to circle back to McCowan. Now over to Baxter in across the line with Bozak. Backhand shot. Knocked down in front by Ludwig. He plays it up on the left side for Ryan Walter. In across the line, a slapper for the steer to the corner by Vernon. Kept in at the point, deflected wide. Ryan Walter trying to get it out front. Knocked off his stick, and Lou has it for Calvary. Lou gets away from one check as he moves out. Lou dodges another check, gets it ahead to Bozak. And Bozak couldn't go anywhere with it, and the Canadians shoot it back into Calgary territory as Jamie McCowan touches it, icing his charge against Montreal. Bob Johnson and his coaching staff made four changes for this hockey game. In are Bartell, Bradley, Petillo, and Mullen. Out are Barazan, Hull, Johnson, and Mike Eves. Colin Patterson is still in Montreal in the hospital where he's trying to recover from this virus. Calgary, of course, are hoping to extend the series and pick Colin Patterson up when they get into Montreal. Well, we say hello to Colin Patterson in the hospital in Montreal looking in tonight. And, of course, he is certainly hoping that the series will return for a sixth game. And Nick Petillo making his first shift since he was injured during game one of this series. He has a bad bruise on his right hip, and the fans respond when Nick Petillo gets on the ice. I thought he, he adds enthusiasm. I thought he was a big man in the first game. He had anything in red that was moving that <laughs> night, and it was a key man for Calgary. Petillo is going to move into that face-off circle. He had a little difficulty this morning at the skate, turning to his left because of that bruise. 
From the faceoff, the shot on goal. Waugh hangs on. This is an interesting lineup for Calgary. Patillo, Sheehy, and Hunter. Patrick Waugh, who has been so good in the playoffs with that 1.87 average. You know, when he was drafted in 84, he was drafted number 54 overall. Craig Billington of the New Jersey Devils and Daryl Ray, who belongs to Edmonton, were goaltenders that went ahead of Patrick Waugh. And those two goaltenders are going to be in the league and be strong, as has Waugh. Sheehy into the circle against Scrudland. 17.45 remaining in this opening period. Scrudland got the draw to McPhee on the right side to Lemieux. He winds up the shot right on. Vernon kicks that to the corner. Patillo trying to move it out. He is checked by Scrudland. Scrudland looking out front. Feeds it out front and the shot fired wide. It comes into the slot again and Patillo knocks it down. And Calgary comes back, led by Hunter. He drives it into the corner. Patillo centers it. It's knocked down by Green. Green tried to play it around the boards to McPhee. A whistle on the play, and there's a penalty. Nick Patillo is going to get the first penalty of the hockey game, roughing the call. Montreal on the power play. Nick Patillo roughing the call, 243. One of those retaliation penalties, J.D., as he got back at Mike Lawler in the corner. That was in the corner. Now, Montreal were 0 for 3 in the last game on the power play. They're 2 for 19 in the series. Both balls scored by Nats Nazareth. Smith leads the Canadians in across the line. Smith cutting into the slot, plays it back to the point. Vindrak couldn't get a shot on net, plays it back to the goal, and Lube has it there for Calgary. Lube finds an opening and clears it. Calgary have scored one shorthanded goal in the series. That was a goal by Dan Quinn. Larry Robinson, who is having an outstanding Stanley Cup playoff, brings it out in across the line. Robinson is taken out of the play by McCowan. They're unable to clear. Now they get another opportunity, and McKinnis finally dribbles it out into the neutral zone. Move puts on the brakes, dodges one check, tries to move in, but Robinson takes it away from him. Robinson leaves it there for Gingra. 16-23, the time remaining in the period. 103 in the penalty to Nick Patil. It goes into the corner in the Calgary zone. Martin Bradley tried to move it out. Kept in. Nasman to Smith. Smith lost it to Jamie McCown. He was unable to get it out as the Canadians take it to the corner. Comes back to the line to Robinson. Robinson dumping it behind the net for Lemieux. Lemieux trying to move out against McKinnis. He's sent flying. Nasman centered it. Nobody in position to get a shot away. 34 seconds remaining in the penalty. Comes back to the line and Gengra was unable to keep it in. Montreal yet to get a shot on goal on their power play. Calgary very aggressive in their zone. Montreal gaining that Calgary zone but not being allowed to set up. But then for Boisvert, Boisvert drops it for Walter, a shot off the side of the net. Still in that Calgary zone, Sheehy for McCowan. McCowan gets it up to the line, to Lube to Risebrow, just eight seconds remaining in the penalty. Risebrow was checked at the line by Chelios, and Boisvert takes a long shot that is stopped by Vernon. That's the end of the penalty to Nick Patillo. So the Calgary Flames did a good job of killing off the first minor of this hockey game. Reinhardt in across the line, a shot off the stick up into the crowd. And Sheehy, who was used at center ice earlier in the hockey game, was used at the fence, killing the penalty and did a very, very good job. Paul Reinhardt grew up only a couple of blocks away from Don Maloney, who plays with the Rangers. They both played for the Kitchener Rangers at that time in junior. And Paul had stated how he would like to have seen Don Maloney in the finals, but Montreal were just too good. This is one of the few times I've seen Reinhardt take control of the puck in this series and he has that ability. This time is deflected nicely by the Montreal defenseman into the stands. One of the previous times was the power play goal he scored earlier on here in Calgary. A lot of the people in Montreal having fun on the phone-in shows and so on with the fact that the Montreal Canadiens won the Stanley Cup in 1946, 56, 66, and 76. This is a 86 level. Chalios starts out from behind his own net, dumps it out into the center ice area. Here's Ganey in across the line. And in trying to carry that puck, he went offside. All right, J.D., there is John Cordick, who is not exactly a meek and mild-mannered hockey player. We had what we saw the other night at the end of Game 4 in Montreal. So far, there doesn't seem to be any carryover. Is the physical aspect of this one with so much on the line as important as it might have been earlier in the series? Well, they're going to be phys physical, of course, but they're going to play it clean. Cordick spotting that black eye, sporting that black eye, excuse me, from Tim Hunter. Cordick was a defenseman when he turned pro of playing forward. Now, I think he's played very well. 
Lanning and Darnold shoots it into the Montreal zone. Chelios taken in against the board by Quinn. Now he's bumped by McDonald. The puck loose in Montreal territory, and Ganey comes up with it to Carbono. Carbono, a long shot that is gloved by Vernon. Vernon drops it back at the net for Robin Bartel. For McDonald. McDonald dumps it out to the center ice area. He was looking for Tonelli. Broken up there by Montreal with 14.25 remaining in this opening period. It's still scoreless. This fifth game of the 1986 Stanley Cup Final. A game which Montreal could claim the cup by winning. Now it's McPhee moving in at the side of the net to Carbino out front. And he couldn't get a shot away, but there's going to be a penalty. A hooking call, and I believe it's Lanny McDonald who will be going off so the Montreal Canadiens get their second power play of the game. Calgary can't keep on taking these penalties early in the piece. Lanny McDonald for hooking and Mike McPhee. This one came in traffic in close in front of Mike Vernon. There goes McPhee down. The Canadians again a man of the good. You have to be impressed with Mike McPhee. He made a quick play there to set all that up and make Calgary draw the penalty. Brian Walter against Joel Otto in that faceoff circle and Joel Otto, if he can win the draw and the Flames get it out of their own zone, will immediately head to the bench. But he takes most of the important faceoffs in his own zone for the Calgary Flames. Now it's Jamie McCowan getting that opening and firing it down the ice, and Otto is off the ice. This is a situation where you're going to see Walter and Lemieux jam the front of the net. Montreal are going to try and feed their points, and Matt Snazlin will dart in and try and find the loose puck. If they can get in there, Calgary again killing the penalty well. Luke stolen away from Lemieux. Luke with a shot, saved by Wall. And back comes Larry Robinson. 133 remaining in the penalty to McDonald as it's shot into the Calgary zone. McCowan pokes it around in the boards for McKinnis and he clears it. 13-29, the time remaining in this opening period, the second power play of the game for the Canadians. Good penalty killing the first time by Calgary. And so far, they have stymied the Canadians on this second manpower advantage. Kept in at the line by Bobby Smith. Along the boards for Naslin. Naslin gets it back to the net. Out front into the slot. They score! Jim Brown! Two nights ago in Montreal, Gaston Jingra may have played his best National Hockey League game. He puts the Canadians on the board with the power play goal. Three Calgary players over in the corner. Now there's four out of the area. So it's one on one. Jingra beats Vernon as he can't get set. Watch McCowan leave the front of the net. There's already three flames over against the boards. That makes all of them, four including McCowan. And a great play out of the corner, I believe, by Lemieux on the stick of Jingra. His second goal in the series is first on the power play. So with that power play goal, the Canadians in front, 1-0. Lemieux and Nasdaq drawing assists on the goal by Jindra, his second of the playoffs at 6.53. Joel Otto to Poplinski. Poplinski dumps it down into the corner. Otto racing after it. There's going to be a penalty here against the Montreal Canadiens. The puck into the slot area as it's touched by a Canadian. The whistle goes. And there was some pushing and shoving taking place behind the play. But there will be a penalty here against the Montreal Canadiens. Montreal's rookie center, Brian Scrutlin, the hero of the piece in game two in this building, draws the first Montreal penalty. It's a high sticking call. So the Flames will go on the power play. Calgary in this series, four for 14 when they've had a man advantage. And Dick, they only had one power play advantage that last game and did not score. Calgary have scored 25 power play goals in the playoffs this year. The only team ever to score more in a playoff year for the Islanders in 81, they had 31 power play goals. So for Calgary, it's been a good year playoff-wise for their power play unit. But they have had problems against Montreal, scoring goals five on five. Their last five-on-five five goal was the one by Tonelli here in game two. Otto gets it back to the point to McKinnis. McKinnis tries to slide it off to Mullen. He does get it, fires it wide, the rebound. And Bozak on the backhand fired it wide, and the Canadians clear it. Even though Calgary didn't hit the net there, Bozak shot it wide. Patrick Waugh is moving across and staying on his feet. Earlier in the year, wrong. He would have been down, leaving the top of the net open. Calgary have a great power play. We'll see how it works. Ryan Hart. Was looking for Otto, cutting in on the right side. The pass did not get through. Now Bozak gets it in the corner. Back to the point to Mullen. Mullen 
Gives it over to Reinhardt. Reinhardt in front to Bozak. He couldn't get a clean shot away. The puck bounces to the side of the net. And right at the side of the net, Carbono picks it up and takes it into the corner. He's unable to get it out, however. It goes back to the net. Green will try to move it out of the zone. Lawler has lost his stick. He's broken his stick, actually. He's just standing in front of Patrick Waugh. Now back to the point to Reinhardt. Over to McKinnis. McKinnis tried to get it into the slot. Broken up by Carbono, and then it's flipped into the corner. Now Lawler, without his stick, watches it slide to the side of the net, and Patrick Waugh hold it for a faceoff. And we didn't see the Canadians do what we saw the Flames do the other night, hand uh, forward, hand the defenseman a stick in a situation like that. Here is Joe Mullen, missed the game two nights ago in Montreal. He and Gaston Gingras in the heavy collision in game three. Mullen with the neck shoulder injury that kept him out of the lineup. It's more of a shoulder than it is a neck. He was really hit into the boards. Says he feels good tonight. Let's watch the puck start bouncing around Patrick Waugh's net. And watch Bozak pick it up. Now, what's he want come across standing up? That's what I meant. In the old days, or earlier in the year, he'd slide across with his feet first, and people would put it up over top of his body. He is a confident young man. 1-0, Montreal leading. 40 seconds remaining in the penalty to Scrudland. Back to the point to Lube. Lube slides it into Quinn. Back to Lube. Lube to Quinn. He takes the shot. That hit the side of the net. And in the corner, Ryan Walter digs it out and fires it down the ice. 24 seconds remaining in the penalty to Scrubland. 11.06 in this first period. 1-0 Montreal in front. Lube in across the Montreal line. Back to the point to McCowan. Back to Lube. Into Quinn. They move it around to McCowan. To Lube. Lube fakes one shot. Tees it up, lets it go. It hits someone in front and then bounces away from Dan Quinn as he was racing in from the right side. And Montreal clears as the penalty to Scrutland expires. Jamie McCowan to Paul Baxter. Ahead to Quinn. Quinn leads the attack across the line. Looking over for McDonald, a shot right on. And Patrick Waugh came across to make the save on the veteran Lanny McDonald. Fired out into the center ice area where Jamie McCowan has it. To Paul Baxter, 10-21 remaining in this opening period. 1-0, Montreal in front. The power play goal by Gaston Gengra, the man who has the puck, as he brings it out of his own zone. He takes a long shot that is gloved by Vernon, but a Montreal player had preceded Gengra's shot across the line. 10.07 is the time remaining in this first period. Scrubland is out there with McPhee and Lemieux. From the faceoff, Sheehy centering that line of Hunter and Patillo tried to break away, but he was stopped and it's dumped into the Calgary zone. Patillo along the board, gets it to the line. Robinson keeps it in. The puck bounces in front of the net, and it was flipped towards the goal by McPhee, gloved and held by Vernon. McPhee is one quick, strong individual. He darted in there and got the shot. He went to college to RPI in the United States in 81 82. He only played six games because of a serious knee operation. But what a good, strong play. So he darts in there, he beats everybody to the puck. And Vernon had to be good on that play. Some say Mike McPhee will inherit the job that Bob Ganey has as the best left winger defensively on the team. McPhee is a good hockey player. And he seems to have played his best hockey in the playoffs this season. Jamie McCowan starts out of his own zone for Calgary. McCowan doing a good job of bringing it in across the line. Centering it and Joel Otto couldn't deflect it as he was tied up by Larry Robinson. Now Robinson chases it down in the corner. Nudges it up to center ice where Ganey is spun around. Following on the play is Carbono. Carbono works in across the line with Rooney. This is Rooney's first shift of the hockey game, his first appearance in the playoffs. Over to Mullen. Mullen for Poplinski. They center it and it's fired wide by Otto. Great chance for Joel Otto as he was cruising in alone on the left side, and he fired it high and wide. Back come the Canadians. Rooney, or Gingra, I should say, hit the linesman, and finally gets another chance and dumps it in with 9.03 left in this opening period. Gingra to Naslin. Naslin flips it in. Going into the corner after it is McKinnis. Lead pass too far for Lube. And Ludwig chases it back into his own zone. 8.46. Still to play in the first period. 1-0 Montreal in front on the power play goal by Gingra. Martel gets it up on the left side. Here's Bradley in across the line. 
Knocked off the puck initially by Chalios. Managed to keep on going. Take it back of the net. The two of them go down. Bozak has it. Bozak trying to move out against Ludwig. Having problems. Gets it to Lou. Lou drops it into the corner for Bradley. Bradley plays it to the point. Bartell with a shot. That's deflected just wide. Lou gets it again. Looking in front as Baxter had raced in from the point, but couldn't get the pass through. Good hustle by Bradley, Bozek, and Lou. They look like a Soviet Union team. Crisscrossing and walking it around. Bartell pinching in from the point, taking it to the corner for Quinn. Quinn now gets it back to the line. Bozek with a shot, knocked down the front. Baxter with a shot. And Patrick Law did the splits as he came across to grab it. And it appeared as though Baxter had a wide open net. And guess who got involved in a little hassle? Hook and Lou and Max Neslin. Two mild mattered Swedish players. Luke seemed to take a bit of a rack of claw after the save had been made. Neslin followed in behind. Boy, I'll tell you, the Flames going into this game have played, and I guess now it's gone past it, three full games without an even strength goal. If you look at it from the minutes involved, and they've had some great chances here, J.D., in the last couple of minutes. Otto was starting it off. And that man right there, Patrick Waugh, when he moves across the net here, he had gone down to stop his shot. But he's going to be blocked by his defenseman in front right there. Now, Waugh's down. Look at his concentration. He dives across, and he kept his concentration level right where it should be. Watch the puck, and then ate it up with his catching hand. The concentration level, Patrick Waugh, is really something. When he played junior hockey, his averages were way up, 6.26, 4.44, 5.55. And in the majors, in the playoffs, 1.87. What a story. He credits the work of his defensemen for that very impressive goals against average, and they have done a job. Here's a two-on-one. McPhee moving in across ice, and they couldn't get the shot away as Lawler at the side of the net had penetrated just a little too deep for that pass from McPhee. Now it's Patillo in across the line. Patillo backhand shot, it sails wide. In the corner, Lemieux starts back for Montreal. Here's another two-on-one to Scrublin. With McPhee, takes the shot, the rebound, another save, and it's not wide by Lemieux. Back at the line, Jinkra winds up, he fires it wide. At the other point, Robinson will tee it up. He takes the shot off the stick of Patillo and up into the crowd. Talk, talking about their lack of scoring, some of the Flames players were saying before the end they had to storm, they had to all move up, they had to be on the move a lot more. They're doing it, John, at the same time leaving themselves rather defenseless. They had two two-on-ones against. Montreal with a two-on-one here. McCowan is the one deep. Three saves in a row we're going to see here by Vernon. One, look at the position and the balance. Two, now he's going to make another one right there as it's jammed in and Matteo took his man out. McCowan was trapped that time. The previous two-on-one, McCowan's the one that was the defenseman back that broke up the play. Mike Vernon played as minor hockey in the Southwest Community Association in Calgary, a native Calgary, and blew up, grew up just three or four blocks away from Bearcat Murray, the head trainer of the Flames. Patrick Wine, incidentally, I was talking about his junior hockey. He played in Granby, the Quebec major junior hockey league. Okay, Granby had bad teams, and some people feel, J.D., and you might want to comment on this, if you want to be a better goaltender when you're coming up as a kid, get with a bad team, you get a lot of shots. He has them in Granby, I'll tell you. If you look at his average, 6.26 one year, I think you have a good solid point there. The scouts were saying that many nights he had 50 and 60 shots per game. Calgary getting it out to the line for Tonelli. Tonelli flips it over to Quinn. And across the line with McDonald. McDonald fires the shot wide. At the point, Bartell plays it around the board for Quinn. Quinn is taken in against the boards. Tried to get it back to the point. It bounces to Maley. Maley can't get it out. Quinn keeps it in there. Quinn to McDonald. McDonald to the line. Baxter takes the shot. It's blocked by the Canadians. Comes to Bartell. He takes the shot. That goes wide. Ryan Waller takes a hit from Baxter. There's a broken pane of glass as he was driven in against the boards and the puck was dumped out. Baxter into Ryan Walter and that caught that sheet of glass loose. As well, a matter of fact, it shattered. It's Everybody oh. seems okay, but it shattered as right with the Canadians calling for a penalty on the play. Kohorski saying he hit him with the shoulder. Let's see if he did. You bet. That's a clean, clean check. And look at it. Spring loose. And then it's going to shatter as it falls there. right there. Oh. Pop. Paul Baxter is a smart individual. He can stand up, move up on the play. This time he's meeting solidly with Ryan Walter, who incidentally is very solid himself at 197 pounds. And poof, 
there goes the glass. There will be a delay. What a collision that was. We hope everybody's all right down there, the fans. Paul Baxter, one time with the Pittsburgh Penguins, he went through a season as the most penalized player in the NHL. 6.27 remaining in the first period. Montreal has a 1 0 lead. You know, Calgary had trouble in Montreal in those two games. In fact, even game two here in the Saddle Dome, getting through the neutral zone, the zone between the blue lines with any push at all or any force of getting into the play cohesion if you will they've had a lot more success here in the first period as a unit getting into Montreal's zone therefore getting better scoring chances well the maintenance staff here at the Saddle Dome did a rather quick job of completing the repairs this play is underway again Mullen pokes it down the ice and Carbono goes back to his own blue line ahead for Rooney Rooney dumps it off the boards but back to grab it as Joel Otto. He drops it into his own zone to she who has alternated between center and the blue line. Here's a shot as he tried to clear and it was knocked down by Ganey. And as Vernon made the stop it's dumped down the ice by Calgary. Carbono now for the Canadians. Looking for Ganey intercepted by Reinhardt to Lube. Lube fakes the shot circles back to the line. Lou trying to set something up. He was trying to flip it back to Sheehy. It bounced away from him, and he has to chase it back into his own zone. Larry Robinson fired it into the Calgary zone, but Carbono was trapped offside. Bozak in the lineup. He played some junior B hockey in British Columbia. In Castle Bar, the team was called the Rebels before he went away to go to college. Bozak is a natural sediment playing on the wing. Lots of uh, problems with the ice tonight. I haven't seen the saddle go where it's been chipped this much. I guess it's the delay between the games. Usually ice at the saddle dome is considered to be among the best in the league. I think the general feeling is that uh, Northlands Coliseum in Edmonton may have the best ice in the entire league. The puck dumped into the Montreal zone. Bradley bumps in there with Ludwig. Luke comes in to help out. He tried to center it. It hit the back of the net. Now Ludwig has it as he got away from Bradley, playing it ahead to Naslin. He couldn't go anywhere with it, and the Flames take over at center ice. McCowan to Bradley. He has it poked away by Bobware. A race for the loose puck, and Vernon came out of the net to play it to McKinnis, who dumped it up. Bradley brings it in across the line, but Bozak was offside. We've seen a great series out of Bobby Smith in Montreal. Who's says he plays well when he comes time to play against Calgary. They have a trophy in the Ontario Junior League. It's called the Bobby Smith Trophy. The fellas that goes to the Scholastic Player of the Year who also plays very well at hockey. The winner last year was Billington, who now belongs to New Jersey. And the original winner in 1980 was Steve Conroy, who used to play in Calgary, now a member of the New York Islanders. Bobby Smith said he almost decided to get into medicine. Become a doctor instead of becoming a hockey player. He's a very smart individual. Three members of the Canadians have been in the Stanley Cup final before. He's one of them. With Minnesota in '81. Ganey and Robinson, of course, the others. Mike Eaves was on that team. Mike Eaves belongs to Calgary. Face off just outside the line. Risebrow now out there centering Theo and Hunter. To start the game. Sheehy is at that center ice position for Calgary. Fired down the ice by the Flames. And this will produce an icing call as it's touched by Green. Green took a bit of a hit after the whistle from Tim Hunter. Hunter simply skates away, but Green moves up and uh, he says something as he followed Hunter down the ice. And the Montreal players are also protesting the referee Don Koharski. There's been a lot of talk, of course, during the series about the late hits and the after the whistle milling about, as Danny Gallivan mentioned the other night. Kentucky Ricebrow, who has four Stanley Cup rings. Here's the hit. Now the whistle is gone, and Hunter, as he skates by after the icing call, nudges Green. They're still talking it up. Ricebrow handled, I think, that mistake that he made during the last game, which was the only goal, cost the only goal very well. He's a very classy individual. Now he and Scrooland, I believe, are going to get penalties. They've been jawing at each other for quite some time. Kuharski not standing for it. They may get 10 minutes each year. Well, Koharski didn't waste any time. The third time that the two of them had exchanged words and finally started to go after each other, he stepped in there and waved them both off to the penalty box. So it appears as though they are drawing misconduct as they have come out of the penalty box 
and they're heading to their respective dressing rooms. When Harry Neal worked with me in the first couple of rounds of Canadians, when he mentioned that Kohorski's got a short fuse, his patience is rather thin, and if you just keep at it a little too long, he's awfully quick to give you the finger, and he gave it to them right there, so they're gone. Ten-minute misconduct at 15-21 to Rise, Brow, and Squidland. Round the face off, a battle for that puck. Finally, Robin Bartell digs it out. He's having problems moving out of there against McPhee. Decides to try and come out on the left side and gets out into the center ice area for Tonelli. He dumps it down into the corner. McDonald and Green bump. The puck is loose in the corner. Picked up there by Lemieux. Lemieux clears it out into the center ice area. McPhee overskated it. He gets it back again as he circles to his own line. Back into his own zone. Green with it now for Montreal. 4.08 left in the period. Ahead to McPhee. McPhee was stopped as he came in across the line. Waller following on the play has it. Gets it to McPhee in the corner. McPhee trying to center it. Lemieux was tied up. And the puck is played off the boards and out into the center ice area by Calgary. Brian Waller has replaced Scrubland at center between McPhee and Lemieux. Scrubland drawing that 10 minute misconduct along with Risebrow at 15 21. Baxter at his own line for Bartell. Bartell is forced back into his own zone by Carbonell. Finally, it's fired up into center ice. Tonelli picks it up. Tonelli tries to dump it in, but he hits his own player Otto with it, and Otto took a check right at the line as the Flames tried to fire it in. It was dumped out by Montreal. The Flames try again. Kaplinski has his pass knocked down at the line by Lawler. He plays it off the boards back into Calgary territory. Now Montreal are back playing that neutral zone well. Calgary having trouble getting the other team's blue line. Long shot by McKinnis. A pad save by Patrick Waugh. And the puck is dumped out into the center ice area. Picked up now by Carbono. Carbono is checked by Kaplinski. It's poked in by Bradley. Jindra bumps Bradley in the corner. The puck goes back of the net. The two of them fall. Mullen digs it out to McKinnis. He takes a shot. That's why. Racing in from the other point is Reinhardt. Reinhardt flips it to the corner. Mullen racing in against Robinson. Robinson got to it across to Jindra. Up to Ganey as the Canadians bring it out. Maley fires it wide at the Calgary net. Reinhardt back after for Calgary to Poplinski. He takes a hit from Bobby Smith. And the Calgary Flames once again are stopped in that center ice area with 2.19 remaining in this opening period. Montreal ahead, 1-0. Reinhardt trying to move it out against Maley. Finally gets some help from the teal, but they can't get it out as Naslin knocks it to the corner to Smith. Hits one for Maley. He couldn't deflect it. Back at the line. Robinson takes a shot. It's blocked by Hunter and bounces out the center ice. The two Calgary players, Hunter and Patillo, collided and went down right at the blue line following that shot by Robinson. Patillo will try and move it out again. Rink wide pass. Intended for Hunter, broken up by Montreal, and fired back in with 142 left in this opening period. Very close checking in that center ice area by the Canadians. They really aren't giving Calgary many opportunities to get on track. And penalty coming up here, a slashing call. Nick Fatillo in the neutral zone is going to get the call for slashing, and he's going to have to be careful here. He's going to get more than that. He had tried to shield the Mew from gaining that Calgary zone originally. And then the puck came out of the zone. He kept harassing one of the Montreal players and gets caught. This will be Montreal's third power play during the first period. Let's watch the neutral zone here. Second power play the Canadians had. They cashed in on the only goal of the game. Now here is Fatio, the non-helmeted player, right there, the left of your screen as he takes a wrap at the Mew. So Montreal with a minute 34 left in this first period. Goes on the power play, Nick Fatio in the box. Fatio was saying this morning that he really didn't think he was going to be able to play tonight, but obviously they did some work on him and uh, they wanted his size and his strength in the lineup. But he has taken a couple of first period penalties. He survived the first. Let's see what happens here as Ryan Walter tries to set something up. Walter tried to get it back to the point. Kept in by Chelios. Now to Bobby Smith. He centers it and Naslin deflected it just wide. Smith gains control again for Naslin. Naslin battling along the boards. Gets it to the line. Jindra fired it wide. Picked up there by Smith. Smith is knocked off the puck by McKinnis. Ryan Walter comes in. Gets it loose to Smith. Back to the line. 
Chelios over to Naslin. Naslin takes the shot, save, and the big rebound is fired down the ice by Steve Bozak. It's obvious Calgary are thinking offense when they're killing the penalty. Lube left the zone early and nearly had a breakaway. Jindra got to the line with Scott and Quinn gets it ahead to Lube. Lube coming in across the line for Calgary, getting set, took a shot and was knocked down by Boisvert, and he dumps it down the ice and going back after it is Reinhardt. Reinhardt for Quinn along the boards. Quinn battling with Chelios. 43 seconds remaining in the penalty, 16 seconds in the period as Chelios takes it away finally from Quinn. Over to Robinson and the Canadians trying to go to the attack but they're having problems getting organized against that four checking of the Calgary Flames in the Montreal zone and that will run out the period. And so the score at the end of the first period is Montreal one, Calgary nothing. Flames establishing a record tonight, their 22nd playoff game. The Islanders had played in 21 games in 1980 and again in 1984. So it's been a long postseason, post regular season for the Calgary Club. Calgary starts period two with Nick Fatio still with 26 seconds to serve in his slashing penalty. It's dumped back into the Montreal zone as Jindra races back after it. He starts out slowly with Bobby Smith on his right side. Jindra, long shot that Vernon flips to the corner. Smith back of the net for Lemieux. He tries to poke it around in the board, goes after it, takes Lube off the puck. Gets it to Smith, back in the goal. Smith looking out front, now goes to Nasman. And Patillo is back in the ice. There's a shot off the stick of Jindra that went high and wide. Calgary back at full strength as Bozak gets it over to Patillo. A shot loved and held by Patrick Waugh. The goaltenders aren't quite prepared for it. Nick Patillo has a very, very quick and hard wrist shot. Patillo will go back, spend the offseason in New York where he lives. Bob Murdoch, the assistant coach on the bench there with Bob Johnson, has applied to the University of British Columbia for the head coaching job. Another person that has applied is Harry Neal. And it's a decision Bob Murdoch is weighing heavily with. He loves Calgary, loves the Calgary Flames. But sometimes you move ahead. Bob Ganey from the faceoff, back of his own net. The captain gets it out into the center ice area. Fires it down into the Calgary zone. Vernon plays it around on the boards. Kept in at the point by Rick Green. Green goes into the corner. Gets it out now to Carboneau. He tried to center it. It was knocked down by Quinn. He poked it ahead to McDonald. Rink wide for Tonelli. In across the line. Tonelli drops it. And it's knocked down there. Then fired back in. But it was hit by a high stick. The reason for the whistle. Lanny McDonald leading the charge for the Flames. He only played one preseason game, but has not missed since the regular season began. Tonight, Lanny is playing in game number 102 regular season playoffs. He'll end the year having played more games than any other NHL player. Not bad for a young fella. Good one. You know, in 82-83, he scored 66 goals. He sent him in a lot of the time with Doug Riseborough. The other center he played with a lot was Guy Schwenard. Guy Schwenard was in Montreal and watched one of the games of this series. Flame. He was a 50 goal man for the old Flames in Atlanta. I think he scored his 50th on me and it was embarrassing because the puck <laughs> stuck in the netting and they couldn't get it out and the fans loved it in Atlanta. Sorry I mentioned it. But, uh... <laughs> oh there was more than one. <laughs> Paul Baxter now for Calgary. Looks for Fatil broken up in the center ice area. Oh what a hit there involving Baxter and Lawler. Uh, and Baxter went partly over the boards and then Lawler took a swipe at him and some of the players at that Calgary bench reacted. Well Al McKinnis took a broken at Lawler from the bench area. Flames 0 for 1 on the power play tonight. They get another chance. Mike Lawler of the Canadians off for roughing at 128 and it was rough JD. In the area of the boards right to the Calgary bench. Now there Baxter took a run at Lawler. Lawler takes a poke. Now watch Al McKinnis. He gets into it from the bench area but he does not come up for the penalty. And the cameraman, you see Bearcat Murray leaning over, got the worst of the whole collision. Bearcat Murray down there trying to tend to the CBC oh. cameraman. Tommy Whitford taking uh, the brunt of that blow as the camera was jammed back onto his nose. And uh, Tommy, he's a tough one. He'll be back with that camera in just a moment or two as soon as Bearcat Murray treats that cut. 
So Bob Murdoch restrained Al McKinnis on that bench, and McKinnis could have got himself a penalty too. Here comes Quinn working to the corner. Tonelli out front. Now it comes back to the line. McKinnis fakes the shot to Quinn. Back to McKinnis. He lets it go. It's blocked by Ganey. Kept in by Reinhardt. Reinhardt gets it over to Quinn. Quinn dumps it into the corner. Tonelli plays it back to Quinn. Quinn takes the shot. Saved by Juan. The rebound gathered up by Carbono. Carbono moves to the line, having problems getting it out. Kept in by Quinn, but following up on the play is Chelios who clears it. That was a real good save by Patrick Roy through traffic, but no rebound. Did you see how the Montreal defenseman turned around, controlled the Calgary players, and in turn got that puck smartly out of the zone? Quinn to Otto. Otto drops it back to the point. McKinnis to Quinn. Quinn back to McKinnis. He tees it up. The shot went off the stick to the corner. Puck bounces back to the line. McKinnis with another shot. Hit the post. McKinnis let that bullet-like drive of his from the point go, and that ricocheted off the post. 29 seconds remaining in the penalty. Here comes Lube. Lube fakes the shot. Lube looking back to the line for McKinnis. McKinnis gets it back to Lube. Lube circles. Tries to McKinnis. McKinnis with a shot, and that is stopped by Watt. Comes in front, then is dumped to the corner. Lube has it again. Lube back to the line for McKinnis. McKinnis takes the shot that deflects off the leg to the corner. Lube plays it back to the net. A delay penalty call here against Montreal. And that comes with just two seconds remaining in the penalty call to Lawler. Chelios, I believe, will be going off. John Perron sees his team draw its second straight penalty. It's like really back to back, as Don mentioned, just two seconds left of the Lawler penalty. So this could be a rather important point of the hockey game. John Calgary with this power play stretch. They've gone through four straight periods now without a goal on Patrick Law. And it's Chelios off the slashing 326. This shot by McKinnis is deflected by the Montreal forward and went up high over the shoulder of Patrick Law. You see it catch the crossbar there. But what's happened here is Fans are going right now. Watch this shot. There's a deflection right up high in front. Crossbar by Al McKinnis. Patrick Waugh is tending to his equipment right now. And the fans didn't like that. Montreal buying some time. There's Chelios and Lawler, two defensemen in the penalty box. Now listen, Calgary like to set up and take the shots from the top of the circles. Perron and the Montreal Canadiens have taken that away. So Calgary have Al McKinnis open on the point. From the face off, Mullen tried to get it back to McKinnis just as Lawler stepped out of the penalty box. McKinnis was unable to keep it in at the line. So the Canadians, one man short, fired in by McKinnis. Green races in back to the net. He's checked. Luke comes up with it to Mullen. Mullen to Reinhardt. Reinhardt with McKinnis back at the point. Gets it to McKinnis. Fakes the shot. Look to the other side. And he missed Luke with the pass. And the Canadians clear it. 1.30 remaining in the penalty. McKinnis in his own zone. Plays it back to the net for Reinhardt. Carbono and Ganey out there killing off this penalty for Montreal. Drop pass intercepted by Carbono, And Carbono had a little difficulty controlling it as he tried to break in. Now in the center ice area, it's Reinhardt across the line. Reinhardt trying to set something up. Got it back to the line to Lube. Who fakes the shot. Slides it in front for Otto. He fired it wide. Mullen back to the net for Reinhardt. Reinhardt to Mullen. Mullen back to the line. To Mullen. Into the corner for Reinhardt. Reinhardt dumps it back to the line for Mullen. Mullen took a shot, knocked down by Carbono. He gets it again for Otto. Otto is bumped, got it back to the net for Reinhardt. Tied up by Green. 40 seconds remaining in the penalty. Now to the line to Sheehy. Sheehy fires it off the boards, into the corner. They battled for it there. Mullen comes up with it, gets it back to She. She takes the shot. Knocked down in front by Lawler. It goes to the corner where Otto has it. He tries to get it back to the point. Broken up by the Canadians. A race for the puck. Carbono against She. She he got there. There was a long, long shift for Carbono, and he was too tired to chase down that loose puck. McDonald in on the right side. Working against Ludwig. Ludwig comes up with it, plays it around on the boards. McCowan from the point, pokes it into the corner. But Bobby Smith gets it and dumps it down the ice. And the Canadians are back at full strength. Now it's Dan Quinn. 
Coming out from his own zone on the left side for McCowan. He shoots it in. Got back of the net. McCowan tried to pick it up as Patrick Waugh was back there trying to play it for Montreal. Baxter steps into the Montreal player Boisvert in his own zone and really leveled him against the boards. Now Baxter brings it in, takes a shot off the leg to the corner. Danelli dodges a check from Robinson. The big Montreal defenseman poked it up into the center ice area. It's dumped down into the Calgary zone with Baxter after it. We've seen two crushing body checks. First it was Ganey on Lube and then Baxter on Boisvert. Lemieux unable to control that puck. Stolen by Smith and shot just wide. Now along the board, Poplinski gets it out to McDonald. 13-39 remaining in the period to Poplinski on the left side. Out front for McDonald. And the shot knocked down by the Montreal defense and dumped down the ice. McKinnis shoots it in. Tim Hunter races into the corner after it. Tries to get it out front. Poplinski couldn't do anything with it. And back comes Robinson for Montreal. He's checked as he got the center ice. Poplinski to the attack once again. A long shot that Waugh steers to the corner. Not out. Another shot from the point. Waugh flips that to the boards for Naslin. He couldn't control it. And Calgary takes over in the center ice area. The Flames applying pressure here in the second period. Looking for that tying goal. Montreal in front. one nothing. A first period marker. A power play cap tally by Gaston Gingras. Stolen by Bozak. The crowd alive now as Poplinski takes the bump but still manages to control it. Now he's tied up in the corner. Out front, they score! Bozak! Good hard work, John. Hunter and Poplinski in the corners along the boards. Forced Montreal. Look at this. Poplinski beats two men with a puck. Hunter shuffles it out front. Chelios can't get back, and it's in the net. Montreal's defense are being pushed around here in the second period. That did not happen during games three and four in Montreal. And that was four checking deluxe by Hunter and Poplinski and Bozak. Again, let's watch along the boards here. Robinson's going into the corner. Chelios is going to go there, too. Now these bulls are wide open. Chelios is already there. Robinson went late. Chelios can't get back, and it's a 1-1 hockey game. Poplinski and Hunter drawing assists on Bozak's first goal at 7-17. Calgary in this period out shooting the Canadians 6-1. And, John, it's the first time since game one, really, that you saw that kind of continuous pressure applied by the Calgary team, and one of the few times, and as you mentioned, the Montreal defense seemed to allow itself to be pushed aside. Going into this game, the last three games, Calgary have been outscored 8-1, five-on-five five situations. Here they get one. Look at the board work, and then it's kicked free, and both defensemen were caught. Nassim didn't collapse, and it was in the net just that quick. Boy, oh boy, we're seeing some hitting and grinding here in the second period. Oh. Keeney absolutely tattooed Lube into the boards, and then Baxter almost put Boisvert in the next week. And this is alive and crazy here in Calgary. Well, Baxter has been a big man in that regard early in the period. The Lawler situation. Lawler ended up drawing the retaliation penalty. I haven't seen Paul Baxter running people like this since his heyday in Pittsburgh. He's not he's, against Montreal. Dick, he's a smart player. He can read plays, and if his knees are fine, he can get there to do it. Well, this crowd was quiet to start the second period, but with that sustained pressure by the Flames, they came alive, and they have been noisy ever since the goal by Bozak. Now it's Ludwig trying to get out of his own zone. He dumps it down the ice. McCowan wins the race for it against Maley. Along the board, Maley gets it now, dumps it into the corner. He takes a hit there from Baxter. Baxter playing a very physical game. Rysdrow gets it, cross ice to McCowan. McCowan has McDonald on his left side. McCowan with the shot high up into the crowd. The face-off just inside the Montreal line. Reinhardt with a shot right on, and the rebound. Joel Otto looking for it, knocked to the corner by Green. The puck comes out into the neutral zone. Sheehy is back for Calgary. Got it ahead to Otto. Otto took a hit in the center ice area. Along the boards, 
Carboneau played it to the line. Dumped back by Calgary and then fired in by Ganey. Carboneau steals it in that Calgary zone. Gets away from Reinhardt. Tries to center it. And Portek couldn't pick it up at the side of the net. Joe Muller ahead to Otto for Calgary. Working against Lawler. Lawler knocked it to the corner. The two go into the corner. Lawler ties up Otto. Now Mullen controls it. Gets it up front to Bozak. His shot knocked down. Mullen with a shot. It goes wide. And the Flames, inspired by that goal, to the attack and putting tremendous pressure on the Canadians. But now it's the Canadians breaking out. Led by Lawler. In across the line. He can't get around Sheehy. The puck goes to the corner. Picked up by Cordick. Cordick. Taken in against the board by Shee. Mullen comes in to help out. He gets the puck to Otto, to Bozak. Bozak tried to poke it around Lawler, and Lawler brings it out into the neutral zone. But Calgary comes back, dumping it in is Sheehy. Bradley was unable to pick it out. Shingras starts back. He dodged the check. Gets it to Smith. Smith tried to drop it to Boisvert. It was broken up by Bradley. Bradley gets it to Bozak across the line. Bozak to the corner, working against Robinson out front. There was nobody there, and Nasman clears it for Montreal. A race for the puck. Bobby Smith going after it. Takes a shot that hit the side of the net. Smith gets it again in the corner to the line for Gingra. Gingra to Nasman in front. He was looking for Boisvert, broken up by the Flames. Gingra with a shot right on. Vernon makes the save. The puck goes to the corner. Tremendous action here in the second period. And finally, they tie it up for a face-off. No, they don't. It looked as though they had tied it up, and it comes loose. Back to Robinson. He falls. And the Flames break out. Bozak gets it over to Lou. Lou takes the shot. Saved by Juan. He covers up. 9.46 is the time remaining in the period. Great action in the second period with the score tied at one. Down the veterinary Robinson is saying to the rookie Patrick Law, thanks a lot, Patrick. An embarrassing moment almost for Robinson. Still shaking his head on the Montreal bench. From the face-off, they try and dig that puck out. It was Scoodland against Quinn in the circle. It's in that Montreal zone. Ludwig. Playing it up along the boards for McVie. He can't move it out against Tonelli. Chelios will try to come out the other side. Off the boards. Intercepted by Quinn. In front for Tonelli. He partially fanned on the shot. Back comes Montreal. Led by McVie. McVie with a long shot. Off his stick to the corner. Martel bangs it around in the boards. Tonelli can't get it out. Now Lemieux in the corner. To McVie. A shot. He hit the boot. They score on the rebound. Scrutland. Right. Almost this line's been something else for Montreal. Scrudlin, McPhee, and Lemieux just work, 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 work. Scrudlin sat out half the first period with a misconduct. Look at Lemieux, the strength with one hand. Everybody was looking around at that loose puck. Nobody was looking at Scrudlin. Lemieux showed some strength in the corner when he one hands the puck out. There it is kept in by a pitching defenseman, Chelios. Look at Lemieux with the strength. Out it goes in front. And watch everybody watch the puck. And there's Scrooge picking up that loose puck, and it's in the net. Chelios made a great play to keep the puck in the Lemieux strength. Ryan Scrooge's second goal. He likes that end of the rink because the first one was the overtime goal in game two. Same net. And that overtime goal, the Stanley Cup record, just nine seconds into the overtime in game two. 9.02 is the time left with Montreal in front by one. Scrutland from Lemieux and McPhee, the official on Montreal's second goal at 10.49 for a 2-1 Canadians lead. From the faceoff, it's Lawler behind his own net. Ahead to Carboneau, he deflects it on the left side for Ganey. Ganey takes the shot off a stick and up into the crowd. Montreal's timing in this series, getting key goals to change momentum, has been very, very important. As we look at Flash, I guess his name is, <laughs> trying to get the fans going. And look how quiet they are now. And a few moments ago, before the Scrooge scored, they were going crazy. Look at the Mew. He's going to get control after Chelios keeps it in. And then Scrooge circles. He's supposed to be high in case they lose control of the puck. Because there's already two forwards in deep. Now it's going to come out the goalpost, and he just wraps it home. 
Chelios, incidentally, I mentioned during that big post-game brawl in Montreal that there was a trail of blood on the ice. It was from the hand of Chris Chelios. He caught a teammate skate, I believe it was Carbonos, and he's playing with a hand that's been stitched up. The Canadians break up the Calgary attack and shoot it back into the flame zone. Now it's Jamie McCowan working out. McCowan on the right side for Mullen to Poplinski. He tried to get it over to Otto, too far for him. And Robinson gets it in the corner, plays it around in the boards. Baxter keeps it in. It's knocked down in that Montreal zone. They battle along the boards for it. It finally comes loose to Mullen. Mullen with a shot. He hit the post. Joe Mullen let a blast go that ricocheted off the post. Not what where with a shot. And that is kicked to the corner by Vernon. The Flames coming within that fraction of tying it. Mullen in again. Drops it for McCowan. McCowan with a shot. And Patrick Waugh got a piece of that one. And the Canadians dump it down the ice with 7.53 remaining in this second period. Those natural goal scorers find a way to come so close. That was a bad angle shot by Mullen, yet he found the goal post. It looked like Patrick Waugh may have lifted up on the play. Dumped in for Naslin. Naslin is taken out of the play by Bartel. The puck goes loose along the board. Bozak unable to move it out. Naslin has it again. He tried to center it, but it went off a stick into the corner. Kept in at the point by Chelios. Back of the net, it popped over the stick of Bobby Smith. It comes back to the line and picked up there by Bozak. He breaks out. Bozak is stopped at the Montreal line, and it's brought in offside by Al McInnes. 7.15 is the time left in the second. Montreal leading by one. Play just underway with the puck fired into the Montreal zone. Hunter gets it to Risebrow. He tries to play it back to him. It's knocked down by Scrivlin. Now it goes back to the net for Risebrow. Out front! Hunter can't get a shot away, and Lemieux starts back for Montreal. He fires it down the ice, racing back after the she. This will be an icing call against the Canadians. And a pileup in the Canadians' goal trees. Chilios took a real wrap down there from Nick Fatio. And they were both entangled at the feet of rookie goaltender Patrick Roy. His goal posts, he talked to them again tonight, I'm sure. They have responded a couple of times, J.D. Look at this shot by Joey Mullen. Patrick Wild left it up, and it looks like it goes through him. See that? Right through his legs, because he lifted that stick up, thinking deflection, and it caught the goal post. It's amazing the way guys that are natural goal scorers, people like Mullen, seem to find a way to get it through a goaltender. And that was very, very close. A little luck side of Patrick Wild that play. Dan Quinn taking the face off. Against Carbono. Carbono gets the draw for Lawler. Lawler tied up behind the net by Tonelli. Now it's Ryan Walter getting it ahead to Carbono. He has Ganey with him. Baxter takes Carbono off the puck and into the corner board. Then Quinn comes in. And Quinn comes up with the puck for Calgary, plays it off the boards to center ice, but the Canadians take over. Rick Green plays it back into his own zone to Lawler. He was looking ahead for Ryan Walter, too far for him, and this is another icing call against Montreal. Rick Green started his career in Washington for the Capitals. Six years he was there, Dick was never in a playoff game as that team struggled. He's certainly been in the playoffs a lot in Montreal. He played junior in London. And in four years of junior in London, he only played five playoff games total. Could you imagine going 10 years and playing in five playoff games? What people forget about Rick Green is he was a number one draft choice uh, overall. And, you know, here's a fellow who missed 25 games this season because of a broken thumb he suffered in the New Year's Eve game against the Soviets. When it gets down to game number 100 for some of his teammates, maybe that time off pay off for a fellow like Rick Green. But he, I think probably over the entire course of the playoff job, watching the Canadians every game, on balance, he's probably been their steadiest defenseman. He missed two and a half games in the Rangers series with that inner ear problem, but boy, he's quite good hockey. Remember Coach Gary Green, who was in Washington, too? He and Rick Green are in the restaurant business together in Peterborough, Ontario. You know, you talked about being fresh. Rick Green's fresh because he missed some time. Ryan Walter put him on that same boat. He is fresh. He missed all the playoffs until this round with that fractured bone in the ankle. He's played well. 
Rise Brow against Scrudlin to the right of Patrick Waugh. Rise Brow gets the draw, but then Scrudlin got to it before Robin Bartell on the point could. Now in the neutral zone, it's McPhee picking it up for Montreal. McPhee dodges a check, and there's a battle way back in the Montreal zone involving Tim Hunter and Scrudlin. And there was no whistle on the play as the two of them finally got back into the action. In across the line, stuck to the corner with Rise Brow for Calgary, circling back in his own net, trying to get away from Bobby Smith. He manages to flip it in, but Smith ties him up along the board. 5.29 remaining in this second period. 2-1 the score. Lemieux with a long shot. And Vernon makes the save. Reinhardt, lead pass for Joel Otto with cross two lines. And there's also going to be a penalty here. Nick Fatil, high stick Lemieux, and the referee is coming over right now. He skates away. He wanted to see if Lemieux had been cut on the play. This is Stanley Cup 86 on CBC. For the third time in the game, the Flames are shorthanded because of a penalty to Nick Fatio, high sticking the call this time at 1440. There was a gathering of the clan in front of the Canadians' bench as Rick pointed out they wanted to see if Lemieux had been cut on the play. Jacques Perrier in particular, there you see him. Well, that's Bob Murdoch, but Jacques Perrier in particular, the Canadians' assistant coach, really after the referee on the play. However, it is a two minute penalty. You know, with Paul Baxter back on it, now he skates off for a line change. Paul Baxter's hitting everything in sight. Remember that he has the ability to irritate the opposition. Don't be surprised if he tries to draw some Montreal players into penalties. He's good at it. He's been good at it. Well, at the moment, Matteo is watching as the Canadians have their power play unit out there. Ryan Walter in the corner, centered it. Nobody there, and McKinnis gathers it in for the Flames. For Bozak, he has Calgary's only goal. Bozak trying to go around. Genbra takes the shot. Waugh makes the save. Bradley picks it up in the corner. Had a little difficulty controlling it. Bozak and Genbra had collided and fallen back of that Montreal net. Now a battle along the boards. Bradley is there. So is Nasman. Finally it comes loose to Robinson. He gets it over to Genbra. And across the line. Genbra to Smith. Back to the point to Robinson to the other side for Nasman. Nasman dumps it in back to the net. Ryan Walter is taken in against the boards, but Smith has it. Smith drops it back for Walter to the point for Nasman. The shot right on the rebound. Vernon makes the save on Ryan Walter. Some pushing and shoving behind the goal line area after the shot by Nasman came in from the point, and Vernon made the save. Two saves is going to end up making here. Montreal, remember, offense comes from their defensemen or whoever's back there. There you saw Vernon make two saves before McCowan could get it. Walter, watch the little rebound. Vernon would want to turn that more into the corner, but Walter's there, and he had to put the blade of a stick near his skates, and he couldn't quite get it upstairs like he would like to have. But Mike Vernon held on smartly. Mainly getting a chance here on the power play now, as there's one minute remaining. Bailey, Lemieux, and McPhee, a different line for a power play by Montreal. Chelios to Bailey. Back to Chelios. He had a little trouble controlling it. Takes the shot. Knocked down in front by Sheehy. Risebrow dumps it down the ice. 47 seconds remaining in the penalty for Tia to Fatil. 2 1. Montreal leads the Flames. Lead pass for Lemieux. Lemieux. Tried to slide it across to McPhee. It's broken up by Bradley. Bradley takes the shot right on. Waugh made the save and the rebound picked up by Robinson. He leaves it in the corner for Chelios, who knocks it ahead to Lemieux. Lemieux working against McCowan, trying to go in. And finally, he was tied up by Sheehy, and he dumps it down the ice. Again, looking at Lemieux and his strength, John. You pointed it out on the last Montreal goal. You saw it right there when he was in the low. He has great balance, not only his strong upper body, but his legs, too. He keeps very balanced. He's going to be another Lemieux in the National League short. He's got very high draft throws coming up. Patillo is back in the ice as Lube is tied up in that Montreal zone by Robinson. Lead pass for Kordick. Kordick trying to get around McCowan. The Calgary defenseman takes it away from him. Comes back to the line. Robinson 
neatly sidestep a check, tried to center it. Now it comes out in front for Ganey. He couldn't get a shot away against Patillo. In back of the goal now, it's McCowan. McCowan trying to move out, gets it to Patillo. Working against Ganey, Patillo in across the line. Tried to center it, Ganey checked him, the puck goes to the corner and the two players go to the board. The puck bounces back out into the center ice area. It's fired to the line by Bartel, picked up there by Risebrow. His shot, a weak one, is knocked down by Chelios. Chelios, four Montreal, shoots it in with 2.27 left in the second. 2-1, Montreal hanging on to that one goal advantage, the go-ahead tally by Brian Scrudlin. Canelli shoots it in, McDonald racing in against Green. The Montreal defenseman takes him in against the boards. It comes back to the point, Baxter trying to keep it in. He hit the Montreal player Rooney with it and it slides all the way back into the Calgary zone. Now it's Lawler in center eyes as he touches it the play is whistled down because the puck was knocked down with a high stick. A bit of a skirmish along the boards directly in front of that Calgary bench. Uh, McDonald but, uh, well now hold it Rooney takes a shot but nothing is going to develop. Well, Claude Lemieux is certainly a candidate for the Conn Smythe Trophy as one of the outstanding performers of the 1986 Stanley Cup playoffs. Four game-winning goals among the ten he has scored. McCowan picks it up off the end boards, dumps it around for Mullen in the other corner. He tried to center it. It bounces. Picked up in the corner again by Mullen. Mullen trying to get it loose. Back to the point now. McKinnis takes a shot. It's knocked down and dumped up to the neutral zone by Green. Calgary using three defensemen out here on a shift. Reinhardt and McKinnis back on the points. They've got McCowan playing left side. McKinnis with a long shot. That goes wide. McCowan from a bad angle took a shot. It was knocked down by Lawler. Lawler got it over to Scrubland and they dump it up. Long shot that Vernon is forced to contend with as Reinhardt fires it up into the center ice area for Otto to McCowan. McCowan trying to move in. He had it knocked away as he went to his backhand. And Chelios comes up with it for the Canadians with 104 remaining in the second period. The Canadians in front by a score of 2-1. Loose puck in the corner. Smith trying to get it out front. Bozak got it, played it around to the other corner. Ryan Walter gets it to Ludwig, a high shot. And that ricocheted off the glass. Now in front, they bang away at it, and Berman goes down to make the save. Close call from close range, J.D., at the Calgary end, but we're getting into that pattern now for these last few minutes. Any shots the Flames are getting are from fairly well outside that defensive formation Montreal sets up. And then Montreal is starting to get to the net. They're going to get a rebound shot again. This is going to go up high off the glass. The puck's going to come out deep again. Everybody's going to get into possession as Mike Vernon looks for the puck. Now when it goes back in, there's going to be a rebound here. And Vernon had a little trouble handling that, but he got himself in a good position before Mullen could get back and take care of Ryan Walter. That was a bit of a bad break on behalf of Calgary as it deflected off the skate blade and got into possession for Ryan Walter. And perhaps that surprised Ryan Walter quite a bit. Twice now, Ryan Walter has been stopped at the edge of the goal in this period. Once on the left side and then on the right side. A shot from the point right on. Vernon makes the save, and that was Lemieux who was cutting in front of the net. Fired down the ice. Chelly is going back to touch it for an icing call against Calgary. That was an interesting play. Lemieux stayed behind the net and then snuck around and tried to get the rebound. Chelios was in San Diego where he was growing up. He ran his, into some kids from Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, and they told him about the Moose Jaw Canucks, and he should go up there and play. So Chelios got on the phone, made a call. He was invited to Moose Jaw, ended up playing two years of Tier 2 hockey at Moose Jaw, and he credits that to the start of his career before he moved on to Wisconsin, where he played college hockey. Great city, Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Here's a shot just fired wide. Picked up in the corner now by Risebrow. Risebrow is bumped there by Lemieux with 14 seconds remaining in this second period. They battle for it. Carbono gets it looking out front for Ganey. He whacked away at it. Vernon made the save. Ganey coming close to making it a 3-1 game. And that's the horn to end period two. And so the score at the end of the second period is Montreal 2, Calgary 1.
Well, are the Canadians 20 minutes away from their 23rd Stanley Cup, or will there be a sixth game Monday night in Montreal? Brian Scrublin, the man who has the Canadians in front by the 2 1 score. I think what you see here is the strength of Montreal, how they gain the puck, take advantage of Calgary in their own zone. You have to really look at the Montreal hockey club that they have on the ice. There's only one smaller player in the lineup, and that's Matt Snazdy. He plays like a big player. Montreal are physically strong. They're young players. All the ones they've inserted in and out of the lineup, Dick have been very big too. Big, yes. strong, physical players. Tonight, Naslin, along with Ganey and Carbonell, for them, each playing game number 100 on the season. Joe Lotto dumps it over on the wing for Mullen. Intercepted by Lemieux. He shoots it in as he takes a hit from Baxter. It goes loose in back of the net, and Baxter retreats for Calgary. He plays it up to Kuklinski. His pass intercepted by Lemieux, and Lemieux gave it right back to him, and it's shot into the Montreal zone. Along the boards, McPhee gets it ahead to Scrudlin. His shot knocked down by McCowan. He was looking for Mullen at center ice, too far for him, and Green shoots it back into the Calgary zone. This will be an icing call as Otto goes back to touch it. This game represents the third time in this playoff year. Calgary has faced elimination. They went to the seventh game against the Oilers, the seventh game against the Blues. Montreal was in that position only once when they played Hartford. That game went into a, that series went to a seventh game and not only that, went into overtime. Good look at the youngster Brian Bradley. When he played right wing on that team that won the gold medal in Finland, the World Junior Championships, Adam Creighton was his centerman. Adam Creighton belongs to the Buffalo Sabres. This kid is a scrappy, good hockey player to play right wing or center ice. And he's getting a lot of ice time tonight. And from the faceoff, the puck is knocked in against the boards by Bozak. Bozak couldn't do anything with it. Loop tries to Bradley. His shot hits Ryan Walter, comes back to the line, kept in there by Reinhardt. Now Bradley tries again. He was looking for Bozak. It bounced away, but Bozak gets it back. Bozak through the corner against Chelios to Bradley. Back to the point for Sheehy. Sheehy tried to play it back to Bradley, but it was knocked out by Ganey. Now Sheehy fires it over to Reinhardt. Reinhardt tried to play it to an open wing, knocked down by the Canadiens Bravere. He couldn't go anywhere with it. And Hoken Lou takes over for Calgary. 1840 remaining in the third period. Lou tied up by Ganey. And the puck dumped out and over the boards, out of play. Calgary's goal in this game has been scored by Steve Bozak. He hasn't played in every game, John. I understand with flame followers or some eyebrows raised from the odd night when he was in uniform. Well, he's a smaller player, and I think he may be tired a little bit. He's been the best role player that Calgary have had throughout the playoffs. He played 64 games throughout the season, though, Dick. That's the most games he's played since 81, 82, when he played 71 as a member of the Los Angeles Kings. He is a Good hockey player because he has good solid skills, not that big though. Robinson cross ice to Gingra off the boards out into the center ice area. McCowan knocks it back in. Gingra will try and get out again. He loses it to McDonald, but there is a whistle on the play, and apparently it was offside. Manny McDonald, one of those National Hockey League veterans. This is his 12th season. Never on a Stanley Cup winning team, and in fact, never this close to being on a Stanley Cup winning team. So for some of those fellows, their careers can be kind of frustrating in that regard. He played all his hockey as a kid in Hannah, Alberta, where his parents still reside. They come in for every single game. They drive two and a half hours, or two hours, I guess it is, to get to Calgary. Smith on the right side to Maley. Maley shoots it into the corner. Maslin dumps it back to the net. Maley tried to get it out front. He was checked there. Cowan plays it around in the boards. Maley picks it off, tried to center it, nobody in position, and the Flames dump it out to center ice. A battle for the puck, it deflects over the boards and into the crowd. Montreal leading 2-1, and Dick, uh, the Canadians are, I think, quite adept at protecting the lead. It's been the story of their playoff year to this point, Don. Check the scores, low-scoring games, nail-biters right down to the end. Here's Boplinski taking a shot that's deflected to the corner by Patrick Waugh. Along the boards, Otto tried to get it back to the line. It bounced away from She. Here's Scrublin racing after it. Scrublin with a shot. He hit the post. And that ricochets back to the line where Poplinski knocks it ahead to Otto. Otto in across the line, tried to drop it over for Mullen. 
Intercepted by Montreal and dumped out and then fired in offside by Sheehy. Uh, just to point out what you're talking about, and J.D. noticed by the time that play was called, all five Montreal skaters were back inside their blue line. That's the kind of a period they are going to play right here, to be sure. Scrutland was the captain of the team that won the Calder Cup last year in Sherbrooke. A bouncing puck gets by Sheehy. Scrutland doesn't take a dime here. I like that. He keeps trying. Look at those legs go. Sheehy's doing everything possible, finding that's a go. And even though the puck was rolling, it went high and caught the goal post behind Mike Vernon. A good shot by Scrutland. A good effort as he tried to get away from Neil Sheehy. He is called Chopper because of the way he skates. You can see it right there. He was telling me today that he had to purchase 12 tickets for relatives who came in from Saskatoon for this game. That will cut into his uh, playoff share, whether it's as the champion or runner-up. Bozak dumps it in. Patrick Waugh hangs on with Bradley cutting for the goal. John, you mentioned Scrutland on that Calder Cup winning team a year ago. So was Patrick Waugh. He joined the team for the playoffs. So this kid's on the verge of two straight pro championships in his first two pro playoff years. And as we mentioned, Rick Green, another of those long timers who has never been this close to a Stanley Cup. Baxter and Carpino right here getting together. Well, boy, Carpino saw the stick coming. He get underneath. And he did a smart thing as Baxter had the stick out about the cross check. Baxter involved in all kinds of collisions. Puck in the corner. Ryan Waller loses it to Lube. Lube back to the point. McCowan with a shot that goes wide. Along the boards, Rick Green gets it ahead to Ganey to Ryan Waller. Waller takes the long shot. That's gloved by Vernon. He leaves it in the corner for McKinnis. Kennis gets it ahead for Bozek. Bozek for Lube. It's center ice. Back to Jamie McCowan. On the right side to Rise Brow. Rise Brow takes the shot. That is blocked by Green. Now it's Lube back of the goal. Trying to get it out front. Green again gets involved and takes it away from him. And plays it off the glass. Out to the line. It was knocked back in offside. Bob Johnson's team has had trouble getting shots against Montreal more than anything else. Montreal has held their opposition to 25 shots or less in 12 of their 19 playoff games. Calgary have had 21 to this point in this game as the trumpeter tries to get the crowd going here. That's just how good Montreal are when they play defense. 16-27 remaining in period three. 2-1 Montreal leading. It was 1-0 for the Canadians after 20 minutes on a power play goal by Gaston Gingra. Then Bozak tied it before Scrudland put them ahead. McDonald with a shot right on. And Patrick Waugh covers up again. Patrick Waugh is a good stick handling and puck handling goaltender. We've seen that as he's moved the puck quickly. He's also not afraid to stop the play in his own zone because he knows his teammates are good on faceoff. Danny Quinn was good there on the faceoff as he went forward and put it right through the opposition center and McDonald with a long shot. The key here is just to shoot as much as possible, look for garbage, look for rebounds, and hope for a mistake. Face off to the left of Patrick Waugh. Watch Quinn here again. He likes to go ahead a lot. McDonald with a shot. That's blocked by Carbono. Sheehy gets it at the point to McDonald. He bangs it into the corner. Chelios has it for the Canadian. Chelios moving it out to the right side to Ryan Walter. Walter flips it in with Ganey racing into the corner after it against Sheehy. Ganey trying to center it. Gets it back of the net now for Walter. Walter to the point. Chelios takes the shot. That's deflected wide as Ganey was tied up in front of the net. Dumped out for Tonelli. In across the Montreal line. Danelli trying to slide it out front, and it was broken up by the Canadians, and Ganey fires it down the ice. And going back to touch it is Lanny McDonald for an icing call against Montreal with 15.39 left in the period. Face off to the left of Waugh. This is Scrudlin in against Bradley. From the draw, the puck goes back in the net. Robinson around on the boards. Lemieux couldn't get it out. They go into the corner again. Mullen and Gingra. Gingra tried to knock it up along the boards. Kept in there by Poplinski. The battle continues in the corner. And finally, Scrutlin comes in to help out. He can't get it out. A long shot knocked down in front by Robinson. He bangs it down the ice with Jamie McCowan racing back after him. He's chased back to the net by Lemieux. 
Cowan fell. The puck goes to the corner. Lemieux gets in there, trying to dig it out. He takes a hit from Poplinski. The puck came back to the line. Jim Brock couldn't get a shot away. Here comes Calgary. Two on one. Mullen with a shot. The save by Patrick Waugh. And Lemieux bangs it off the boards to the neutral zone. Again, John, you've got to be frustrated if you're a Calgary fan. They're not getting close in shots, even on a three on one break. A play like that, the defenseman played it well, so Mullen had to take the shot. It went off, I believe, the inside of Patrick Waugh's leg. He got a good, solid piece of it. Naslin steals it. Naslin out front, and Smith fired it wide. Naslin gets it again to Green. Green with a shot, right on, and Vernon covers up. Good action in front of the Calgary net. Bobby Smith had a golden chance to get the team's third goal, and he fanned on it. And then the puck ended up back to Rick Green. So did Joey Mullen, and he can't believe his luck. It was a two-on-one, almost a three-on-one. Watch what happens here. When Mullen breaks out, it's a good, sharp pass up by, I believe, Poplinski. Now watch the defenseman stay in the middle. And then the Mullen had to shoot it, and it went off the inside of Patrick Waugh's leg. Now Montreal went into the Calgary zone. There's Smith missing on it. Watch the Calgary players all watch the puck. It goes back to the point. Green just wants to hit the net. That's all he does. And then Mike Vernon does a good job covering up as there was good action in front. Bartell took his man out smartly. Producer John Shannon and director Larry Brown providing us with good angles on those replays. Here's a shot by Green, and that is fired wide. Picked up in the corner by the Flames, but they're having problems getting out. Vernon dumps it up along the boards. Maley keeps it in. Back of the goal, it's Robin Bartell now. Getting it out on the left side for Bozak, ahead to Rise, Rob, and the shot goes off green stick into the crowd. Bad exchange in the Calgary zone, John, between the goaltender and whoever he was trying to exchange it with. Montreal with a quick break. They get the puck out of the zone, though, and I want you to watch how Rick Green turns and gets over to Risebrow before he can shoot it. Risebrow knocks it out of the air. Watch Green get across quickly, and he's supposed to be not that quick. A couple of solid strides there, and he created that deflection as the puck went into the crowd. That's pretty good speed by Rick Green. He was the Ontario League Defenseman of the Year, the Ontario Junior League in 75-76. They call it, well, call it the Max Kaminsky Memorial Trophy. Al McKinnis won it in 82-83 for Calgary. And Rick Green and Doug Reister on that play. One left the Canadians, the other joined them on the same day four seasons ago when the trades were made. Chelios now brings it out. Dumps it down into the Calgary zone. Vernon plays it around on the boards for Fatio. He couldn't get it out as Chelios kept it in. Cabano out front to Ryan Walter. Backhand shot. That went off the leg, and then it took a strange ricochet and almost caught the far corner. Almost surprised Vernon. Now Tim Hunter with a long shot off Ludwig. It goes to the corner. Nick Fatio to Otto. Otto trying to center it. It goes off a leg, back of the net. Sheehy tries to center it. To the point, Reinhardt with a shot. Knocked down, a battle for it at the side of the net. And Patrick Waugh manages to come up with him as Ludwig and Fatio do some pushing at the other side of the net. And who else was in front but Tim Hunter, who's been going at goaltenders pretty well throughout the playoffs, looking for the rebound. Patrick Waugh made a good, good, solid save through traffic. Calgary's Nick Fatio in the penalty box for the fourth time tonight, only this time he takes Craig Ludwig with him. Watch the puck in, in traffic. Waugh makes a save. Hunter falls into the goaltender, pulls him down with him. Now it's one on one. Fatio and Ludwig, and they continue to shove. That's why they got penalties. In back of the net. Two players wind up on top of it. And now there's another skirmish. And this one involves Jim Poplinski. And I'm not sure who he initially was involved with. I believe it may have been Claude Lemieux. Michael Lawler was the one who ended up in the clutches of Poplinski. There's a fellow who has surprised everybody. Didn't dress for the first couple of playoff games in the Boston series, but I tell you, as it's wound down, he has been very, very steady. And I'm very surprised by his strength. There he kept Poplinski away. Lawler is very strong, played his junior hockey in Brantford, and then signed as a free agent and went and played two years in the minors and only one year in Nova Scotia, one year in Sherbrooke. There's the emotions, Jim Poplinski trying to get everybody in position for the faceoff. 
From the face off, Robinson in the corner, playing it around on the boards for McPhee, trying to move out against Mullen. Mullen keeps it in the corner. Mullen now trying to move out from the corner, checked by Green, and Green has been a tower of strength in this third period defensively for the Canadians. Poked ahead to Lemieux. He came in across the line with McPhee. McPhee was offside. Montreal's had just one shot in this period. They played seven minutes and one second. Calgary is at five. 12.59 to play in period three as Dan Quinn starts out of his own zone, moves along the boards away from Ganey, but couldn't take the puck with him. Ganey gets it back to Green. Green goes cross ice to Robinson. Robinson out into the center ice area. The puck loose there. Boisvert now gets it. He dodges a check for Ganey. Couldn't go anywhere with it, but Boisvert brings it in across the line. Takes the shot. The save by Vernon, a big rebound, and Quinn has it. Ahead to McDonald, to Baxter. Baxter was looking for Tonelli, too far for him. Robinson races back into the corner along the boards to Boisvert, and he simply dumps it down the ice. Going back after it is Reinhardt. The ice and ball waved off. The puck fired out into the center ice area. Ganey gets it for Montreal. His shot knocked down by Baxter. Baxter moves to the line, shot it in. Green takes over to Robinson, to Smith, to Maley. Maley in across the line. Maley going around right now. Maley takes the shot and going down to his knees. It's Flipped to the corner by goaltender Mike Vernon. 11.49 remaining in the period. 2-1, Montreal leading. The puck stolen at center ice by Nasman. Nasman shoots it in. He goes to the bench as the Canadians make a change. Smith races in for that puck. Looking out front. Smith trying to center it. He's knocked down. The puck loose back of the net. Right out by Calgary. Lube now in control. Gets it over to Reinhardt with Bozak and across the line. Bozak for Reinhardt, and he couldn't deflect it. In the corner, they battled for it with 11.15 left in the period. Sheehy pinches in from the point, manages to keep it in. Bozak looking in front, having difficulty as he's tied up by Jindra. Now Reinhardt goes back to the net. He's taken out of the play by Strubin, and it's dumped down the ice. A race for that loose puck. Lemieux going in after it, looking out front, and he is checked by Hulk and Lou. Lou loses it at the line to Lemieux. Lemieux dumps it to the corner, picked up there by Sheehy. Sheehy gets it to Lemieux. It hops away from Bozek, but Bozek races after it, pokes it in. Bradley has it. Bradley takes the shot from a bad angle. Patrick Wall makes the save. Green plays it around on the boards for Ganey. Ganey tried to slide it ahead for Boisvert. It went off the skate and then across the line, but Boisvert was offside. That's the time remaining, 10.27 in the third period, with Montreal hanging on to that 2-1 lead. Baxter, back of his own net, being bothered there by Walter. Gets some help from Joel Otto. He goes to the other side for McCowan. Ahead to Poplinski, rink wide for Mullen. Green got there first and clears it. Baxter takes the buck along the boards from Walter. Ganey picks it up. Ganey working in with Carboneau. Ganey puts on the brakes, gives it back to the line for Lawler. He couldn't get a shot away as he was tied up by Baxter. Maley now to the corner, back to Rick Green. Green dodges. Rick Green is a defensive defenseman. And look at the grin on his face as he scores one of his rare goals. Who would have believed Rick Green would make a move here like he did on Mullen? And then with the traffic, there's no way Vernon could see that puck. Carbono went in front with McCowan. The puck went off the shoulder of Mike Vernon. Look at the traffic. Right in front, Vernon doesn't see it. Green times it perfectly. And what a big, big goal for Montreal. Green's first of the playoffs. I made the comment earlier that I thought Rick Green had had an outstanding period in his own zone. He comes up with a big goal here to give the Canadians a two-goal advantage. <laughs> That's his second playoff goal he had one two years ago in the playoffs. And certainly none may loom bigger in the career of Rick Green than the one he has just scored. Here's a chance for Smith, he scores! Happiness is the Montreal Canadiens bench right now. You expect Bobby Smith to get goals, 
And J.D., he saw the top corner, and he put it right there. Look at that little move right there by Matt Naslin. He's the one that made this play. And a good shot up top once again by Bobby Smith, who played great against Calgary in the playoffs. It was a Minnesota-Calgary series. Look at that collision in front as Mike Vernon's up high, but the puck was already by him. Little Matt Naslin in the corner, drew people to him, put it on the stick of Bobby Smith, and they're rolling. Two goals in 19 seconds for Montreal. Green from Maley and Lawler at 10-11, and then Smith from Naslin 19 seconds later. 4-1, Montreal leading. The Canadians in control, and it looks very much as though they will be claiming their 23rd Stanley Cup. In the center ice area, it's the Mew. Getting it away from Bozak and shooting it in, and the Canadians now are making some quick line changes. Baxter moving out for Calgary to Jamie McCowan. Lead pass, he was looking for Luke. Broken up by Ganey. Carboneau has it now for the Canadians. Carboneau working against Baxter, puts on the brakes, shoots it in back of the net for Ryan Walter. He's tied up there by Jamie McCowan. They continue that battle, back of the goal. Finally, it pops loose, and McCowan starts up for Hogan Lou. Lou fires it deep into the Montreal zone with Larry Robinson back after it, rifling it around on the boards for Ganey, who simply redirects the puck out into the center ice area. 8.24 remaining in the third. Mullen in across the line. He couldn't carry on. Bradley dropped it back for Kaplinski. He took a shot that went off the leg. Bradley in the corner is spun around. Poked along the boards for Smith. He lost it there to Mullen, gets it back, and he plays it off the boards. A race for it. Ganey going after it against G. Ganey a backhand shot gloved by Mike Vernon and Hell. 8.01, the time left in the third. Bobby Smith in the faceoff circle against Joel Otto, gets the draw back to Robinson, a shot. That's gloved by Vernon. He puts it off to McKinnis to McDonald. Great wide pass, Tonelli racing after it. Tonelli takes the shot high off the glass. That puck may have been up on end. Now back of the goal, Tonelli gets it again, trying to center it. He can't against Jindra. The puck bounces up along the boards and it's dumped down the ice with Lanny McDonald chasing it back into his own zone. For Jamie McCowan, ahead to Otto. Otto on the wing for Tonelli, a shot. And Patrick Waugh makes the save and then covers up on the rebound. Patrick Waugh once again makes a good save, controls the rebound. You know, Perron, when he won his first college championship, he was at the University of Moncton. He won it here in Calgary. They beat the University of Calgary in overtime at the University of Saskatchewan. He won another championship in 82. That year, he won it right in Moncton. The championships are not new, John Perron. Well, he's following a tradition. The last three coaches to win a cup in their first season were all coaching the Montreal Canadiens. Joe Blake in 56, Paul Joel in 69, and Al McNeil in 71. And two of those three men, Joe Blake and Al McNeil, are at this game tonight in different camps. Now, now with the Flames, of course. Others have done it. Joe Primo in Toronto, 51. Hunter kept it in. Bozak in the corner. Checked by Green. The puck comes loose. And it's brought out now by Scrudler. He shoots it in. Going in after it is McPhee. McPhee tried to center it. He was tied up by Bartel. Now it comes out in front. Here's a shot. Big save off Waller. Vernon way out of the net. Vernon covers up, and there's going to be a penalty. Here, Calgary's Tim Hunter in the penalty box. So is Claude Lemieux of Montreal, and J.D. Lemieux was getting the first call for interference. Watch the goaltender Vernon come out. Lemieux's going to go in behind him to try and knock him over. See a stick? He's trying to take him out of the play. That's not that illegal. And then Hunter's going to go in over against the boards, and he had a stick up high and almost took the head off of Lawler, and that's where he gets the penalty. Those penalties come with 6.59 remaining. Lemieux for interference, Hunter for high sticking. 4-1, the Canadians lead. Rick Green chases the puck back into his own zone. Green simply dumps it down the ice. Reinhardt goes back after it against Boisbert. Boisbert gets it away from him. Boisbert plays it back of the net. It bounces away from Carboneau. Sheehy picks it up in the corner. Out to Risebrow, who cleared the zone, but the Canadians fire it right back in. Bob Johnson trying everything possible to get some offense going. He's had Risebrow at center ice. Now he's again at left wing with Bradley. 
Ties Brown across the line for Baxter. A shot just wide. Carbonell dumps it out to the center ice area. Picked up by Rise Brown. He shoots it in, but Maley brings it out for Montreal. And he shoots it down into the Calgary zone as Montreal makes another line change. Jamie McCowan off the skates of Hulkin Lube, and the Canadians dump it back in with six minutes remaining in the third. Montreal ahead, 4 1. Hulkin Lube weaves his way in across the line. Drops it back to McCowan. McCowan tried to play it to the other point, but Sheehy wasn't in position. So the Flames have to reorganize. McCowan okay. breaks his stick as he fires it in, and the blade flies way up into the crowd. Bobby Smith gets it to the line, but not out. And finally, Ryan Walter gets it out, and Chelios following up, shoots it down into the Calgary zone with 529 left in period three, 4-1. Montreal ahead of Calgary. Game five of the Stanley Cup final. Montreal leading three games to one. In the corner, it's McPhee. Being chased by McKinnis, who raced in from his blue line position. Now Robinson gets it along the boards for Scrubland, unable to get it out. McKinnis with the shot. Knocked down by Robinson, and the Canadians break out. Four on two. Robinson gets it ahead to Cordick. Cordick with a shot. Save, and the rebound smothered by Burnham. Play just underway from that faceoff in the Calgary zone. Baxter trying to get it out. He succeeds, but Ganey knocks it down. A battle along the boards, and it's fired into the Montreal zone. Jindra plays it back out to center ice. Baxter has to wait for his teammates to get onside. He was trying to control the puck along the boards, then got some help as it was fired in. Robinson gets it to the line. Rink wide pass now for Ganey. Ganey. Tried to flip it ahead to Boisvert, but it was broken up by McDonald. The Canadians gain possession again and fire it back into the Calgary zone with 4.15 left in the third. Long lead pass, and this will be icing against Calgary. I've been kind of hesitant to say this. I don't know why. The Canadians' travel plans were the same win or lose. They're leaving on a charter flight a couple of hours after this game finishes tonight. And Claude Mouton of the Montreal front office was telling me before the game they will arrive at Dorval Airport in Montreal in the area of 6.30 to 7 a.m. Montreal time. So they're flying out of here right after the game. And it's time to think of the con Smythe. I don't have a vote, but I, if I did, okay. Patrick Waugh. There's been six other goaltenders that have won it. I'll give them to you in a minute. You're prejudiced, <laughs> but you're also right in this case. Fired down the ice. Lube got down there to touch it. Then he was checked by Lawler, who clears the zone. Robin Bartell over to McKinnis. Back to Bartell. 3.52 left in the third. Ahead to Risebrow. Risebrow pokes it in for Lube. Lube was checked by Smith, and he simply clears the zone. Right now, the Canadians quite content. Every time they gain possession, simply to dump it out. Why not? They enjoy that three goal advantage. McKinnis with a shot from a bad angle. It comes out the front, and it was knocked away just in time by Rick Green. McCowan brings it back in. Looking for Poplinski. Broken up. It comes back to McCowan. McCowan beats it. And they score! Second goal for the Flames, number 26, Steve Bozak. It's 4 2, Canadians. Montreal turned the puck over near their own blue line. McCowan joined it. Hunter's in front along with Bozek, and it's Bozek who puts it away. Montreal had the puck almost out of the zone. Calgary reacted and turned that outward flow into an inward flow, and they caught Montreal flat, and Bozek scored a huge goal. 3-14, still left to play, 4-2, Montreal. Bozek second of the game from Jamie McCowan at 16-46. You would think that a three-goal advantage would be insurmountable, but we saw the St. Louis Blues in game six of the Campbell Conference Championship at home in the St. Louis Arena. A race of 5-2 Calgary lead with a three-goal outburst. Now Lemieux backhand shot as he stole the puck. 
Picked up the rebound and is taken in against the boards by Bozek. The puck loose in that Calgary zone. Poked ahead now by Bozek. He shoots it down into Montreal territory. Ludwig races back after him. He plays it off the glass. Sheehy was unable to keep it in. And it's back in the neutral zone with 2.34 remaining in the third. Carbono picks it up in his own zone, then loses it to Bradley, to Poplinski, who shoots it in. Racing back after it is Ludwig. Ludwig trying to get away from Hunter. Finally got it out to center ice. The Flames to Nelly brings it in. Lost control of it as it's knocked out. Here's a break now for Carbono. Carbono going in, and he's checked by Jamie McCollum. Carbono slides into goaltender Vernon, and the two of them wind up in the net. Some kind of a shift for Carbono. First of all, he blocked a shot by sliding across. It was a defenseman taking the shot. And then he reads a play and tries to get in on a breakaway. Jamie McCowan has great speed. Baxter over, skated the puck a little bit. Look at Carbono, keep his balance, and he's driving for the net. McCowan times it beautifully as he has great speed. Bang, he gets the puck away from Carbono and then the collision into the Calgary goal. That was a good shift, or a great shift, in my mind, for Dee Carbono, who he, too, has had an outstanding series. Dick, we want to get back to that John Smythe trophy for a minute as we look inside the Montreal dressing room, the bubbly prepared, and it could be celebration time. Those other goaltenders that won the Conn Smythe, Bernie Perron twice, Crozier once, Glenn Hall once, Ken Dryden once, Billy Smith once, not bad company with Patrick Wall wins it. And if they do win the Stanley Cup tonight, Dick, good luck down in that dressing room. Remember that champagne burn. I've been there over your head. I've been there before, <laughs> Whit. If Patrick Waugh does win it, and it's my opinion he should, although we don't have a vote, as we say, well, he'll be the second rookie to win it. Ken Dryden in 71. But Kenny was much more of a rookie than Patrick Waugh. He had only played in six regular season games before he played 20 games in the playoffs that year for Montreal. Waugh started the season for the Canadians back on the 10th of October, playing a game in Pittsburgh. You know, John, he started out like a rookie goaltender. Shaky nights, good nights, but he played a game in Long Island in November. The Canadians beat the Islanders, I think it was 3-1 to one or 3-2, to two, and he was absolutely outstanding. When you saw him play the kind of a game he did that night, you had to say to yourself, here's a kid that's got a lot going for him. Well, Serge Savard had a chance to get Joe Malash from Edmonton over the summer, decided against it because of his Beliefs of Patrick Waugh. Mike Vernon, too, has emerged as a star in the playoffs. This Calgary club and organization, in my mind, is some of the greatest character of any team I've ever seen. They have fought injuries, bruises, problems. They've got four or five people that win the lineup when they beat Edmonton in that seventh game in Edmonton. I don't think that both of you are perhaps being a little presumptuous in anointing Patrick Waugh with that bronze mic. Well, they're saying if. Yeah. An icing call. One fellow that I'm really sorry that we had to miss this series, Gary Suter. You and I worked that last game that Calgary played in Montreal in the regular season in mid March. He was the first star of the game. He was outstanding. He played all 80 games in the regular season. Comes playoff time, he gets injured and has to miss an experience like this one. It's too bad. He may be around a long time like Larry Robinson's been. Robinson's been in the playoffs 14 straight seasons. Gary Suter really hurt the club when he was injured because they don't have a defenseman that can carry it out as well as Gary Suter. And any team that's good in the playoffs have that type of a defenseman. He is very, very good at it. Larry Robinson looked up at the clock and saw that he is a minute and 58 seconds away from his sixth Stanley Cup championship team. He was a winner as a rookie in 73. He didn't play the whole season, but in the last half. Back at the line, Chelios works his way to the corner. Being bothered there by Poplinski, trying to tie it up along the boards, and they succeed. That takes the clock down to 147. 4 to the score, Montreal in front. We have just received word and congratulations to Patrick Waugh. The score holds up. He is the winner of the Conn Smythe Trophy. I might say one thing here. If Calgary get that puck in the Montreal zone, hang on, because Tim Hunter is going to be right in front of him. Fired in by the Canadians, Al McKinnis. Moving out, looking rink wide for Bozak. Bozak couldn't carry on with it as it's dumped back out into the center ice area. Jamie McCollin shoots it back in, but Bozak had not vacated the zone. 127 now, the time left. And when Jean Perron let the Canadians into the first round of the Stanley Cup, 
how many of the so-called experts, maybe I should say how many of us, one of the analysis points for the Canadians going into the playoffs was weak goaltending. <laughs> and he's got a goal average of 187 going into tonight. Uh, May climb to 190 something. It will be under two unless Calgary get a couple here. Played it's every, just incredible in this day and age. Played every game and every minute. Fired down the ice by the Canadians as Jamie McCowan goes back to touch it for an icing call. 116, the time left to play. The faceoff back at the Montreal zone, and Mike Vernon is making his way to the Calgary bench. Bob Diddy does it again. He will win his fifth Stanley Cup if they happen to hold on here. Calgary got what they wanted here. They got a face-off in Montreal's zone. That's one of the one time that Bob Johnson will lift his goaltender. 116 remaining. That's enough time certainly to score two goals, but they wanted the face-off in that Montreal zone. Remember, Danny Quinn likes to go ahead on the face-offs. Mike McPhee, as Montreal are going to take a timeout here, Mike McPhee, I believe, was the one that didn't quite get the puck over center ice before he dumped it in the Calgary zone. And then it was called on icing. We talked about the Conn Smythe Trophy and the fact that if the Canadians hang on to this 4-2 lead, that Patrick Waugh will win that trophy as the most valuable performer in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Well, a teammate, Bob Gainey, was awarded the Conn Smythe Trophy the last time that the Canadians won the Stanley Cup back in 1979. But Bob Gainey already has four uh, Stanley Cup rings that uh, Patrick Waugh so desperately wants, and it looks as though he's going to get his first. Back in 1979, you were the goaltender for the New York Rangers, and you were one of the candidates, John Davidson, for that yeah. Conn Smythe Award, and probably would have won it if New York Rangers had won the Stanley Cup. Second, second is all I ever heard was second, and it's too bad for Lanny McDonald. It's maybe second for him too, and it must be eating him up not to be on the ice right now. The extra attacker out there for Calgary, the faceoff to the left of Patrick Law, standing ovation here at the Saddledome. But the faceoff was shot right on by Otto. Saved by Waugh, the puck is played off the boards to center eyes. Reinhardt back for Calgary to Quinn. Quinn shoots it in. Patrick Waugh stops it back to the net. He leaves it there. Mullen trying to center it. Mullen in the corner. Trying to move it out front. Goes back to the net for Quinn. Over to Mullen. It bounced away from him. Back to the point. McKinnis with a shot to Quinn. And he couldn't get it up and over. Mullen shot scores! If Calgary gets it, McKinnis kept it in, and then the Montreal players couldn't control Calgary in front. Mullen came from behind. He was battered after he scored, was sore, but has remained on the ice. And they closed to within just one goal. I cautioned earlier that a three-goal advantage was not an insurmountable lead. Remember what happened in St. Louis in game six of the Campbell Conference Championship? Well, Mullen from Quinn and McKinnis in 1914 has the Flames within one. Vernon is back at the ice. He's halfway between the goal and the blue line. 46 seconds remaining. What a dramatic finish this will be here at the Saddle fired in. There goes Vernon to the net, but it's whistled down on the offside. Well, Calgary had what they wanted on that play. They won the face off at center ice, and then Reinhardt tried to dump it into the zone of Montreal, but it was called offside. Watch Mullen get out of traffic before he goes and finds the puck, and then blasts it home, and then was throttled from behind by Brian Walter. Calgary again wanted to dump it in. That's the key. Well, these fans in the saddle dome will lift the roof right off this building if Calgary should get a tying goal. Dumped out to center ice. Vernon can't leave the net yet. McKinnis now over on the right side. Pass intercepted by McPhee. McPhee with the shot. Vernon out of the net made the save. 
Vernon really wasn't set for that shot, but made the save. Now Vernon's out of the net. The extra attacker is there. Watt plays it around on the boards. Mullen trying to keep it in. A shot, loose back in front. Oh, Patrick Waugh's got it. Unbelievable save by Patrick Waugh. Calgary won the battle along the boards. Got the puck in front. Watch the puck going behind the net. Waugh tried to get it out. Calgary are there, they read the play, it's in front, the rebound, and Bozek and one of the other players were within a hair of tying this game up. What a save by Patrick Roth, sensational. 14 seconds remaining, the face-off in that Montreal zone. This is what Bob Johnson wanted, that face-off, he always believes. If you're going to get that extra attacker out there pulling your goaltender, you like to have a set play. Absolutely, they've got McCowan up front as an offensive play forward. Otto and Carbono, let's see. Otto against Carbono. The puck comes back in the net. Chelios trying to move along the boards. Eight seconds remaining, the battle in the corner, it's center. Weisbrow couldn't get a shot, it's deflected down the ice, that will do it. The Canadians will win the Stanley Cup. And congratulations to Montreal's Canadians. What an effort, what a surprising story. And an equal amount of congratulations to Calgary's Flames. The character of that hockey club showed right through to the end. The character of both hockey clubs, both organizations gone. Just absolutely incredible. Well, Montreal disposing first of Boston. And then the Canadians moving into the second round against Hartford. Advancing to the Stanley Cup final with a victory over New York and now disposing of Calgary in five games. And Patrick Waugh with a brilliant save with just 14 seconds remaining, preserving the 4-3 win. Eight rookies in the lineup. The Montreal Canadiens with a rookie coach, John Perron, claiming the Stanley Cup. The fans here in the Saddle Dome offering their congratulations to the Montreal Canadiens, but saving the majority of their cheers for the Calgary Flames, who provided them with the most entertaining and exciting hockey season. The ultimate goal, the Stanley Cup, they did not achieve. But they played some tremendous hockey. They showed tremendous character throughout the playoffs. And they went down, giving it their absolutely best shot. Congratulations being extended as the players lined up for the traditional handshake at center ice. So you have to feel for Lanny McDonald, number nine, an almost certain Hall of Famer, but a man who has not yet won a Stanley Cup. Doug Risebrow, four times as a member of the Montreal Canadiens, won a Stanley Cup. For Bob Ganey, this will be his fifth Stanley Cup. In the final seconds of the hockey game, the Canadian players at the bench were on their feet, and as Montreal was able to duck it out of the zone, watch the rejoicing. They realize now, with just three seconds left, that that puck is out, and they've got the Stanley Cup. Mike Vernon, what a playoff series he had. First against Winnipeg, then against Edmonton. He followed up with William Clay against St. Louis, and he performed very well indeed in this championship against the Montreal Canadiens. But the Canadiens came through, erasing a 2-0 deficit in game two of the series here at the Saddle Dome to win on Ryan Scoopin's goal just nine seconds into overtime, and many people believe that was the turning point in this Stanley Cup final. They went home on even terms. They won both games at the Forum. Five to three and one nothing. Ronald Corey, the president of the hockey club, a very happy man, as are the coaches. Jacques Perrier and 
John Perron. John Perron, the rookie boss man of the Canadians, leading the team to a Stanley Cup triumph. Serge Savard, the general manager of the club, who was on many Stanley Cup champion teams, now winning a Stanley Cup as a general manager. And Larry Robinson, a veteran defenseman, offering congratulations and accepting the kudos as well down on the ice in front of the team benches. A dejected band of Calgary Flames. Mike Vernon coming off. Joel Otto. And the presentation of the Stanley Cup will be made by National Hockey League President John Ziegler. Of course, the presentation would be a loud, boisterous affair if it were being made in the Montreal Forum. But the Canadians still receive polite applause from the crowd here at the Saddle Dome as Lefty Reed brings the Stanley Cup out for the presentation ceremonies. Bob Ganey, the captain, takes the cup from National Hockey League President John Ziegler. Matt Stasland and Larry Robinson, the assistant captains, out there as well to assist in hoisting that most cherished trophy high over their heads. 